Hello folks. Today I'm going after the Cygnus Wall. With the moon getting brighter, I'm sticking with narrowband. But I can't wait to get back to broadband. That was fun the last time I was using it. Um, and the Cygnus Wall is part of the North American Nebula, but it's a really famous section of it. And right now I'm going after HA, but as usual I like to do HA first, but then I'll, I'll add um, oxygen and sulfur to it. And uh, right now, the mean readout is 591, so my point of view, anywhere between 500 and 1,000 is fine with me. And uh, let, let's take a look at uh, one raw image. And I'm, I'm liking now, a single raw image is showing off a lot of data, which is usually the case for HA, so I'm okay with that. And let's take a look at my guiding while I got you here. Guiding is point. Six nine. Uh, that's not too bad, but I, I'm sure it will get even better as the night goes on, as it usually seems to do. Let me clear it out. Let's see if, uh, if it starts off any better when it's clear. Because when you clear it out, you're also clearing out the dithering and, and all that stuff. So 0.46. Okay, so it's actually looking pretty good right now. Uh, the dithering usually skews it, so you don't get a, you don't really know how well it's going until you clear things out. Okay, I'll be back later. Okay, so I finished the Cygnus wall. It took me a couple of days because this object isn't in view for me that long because of obstruction. So I captured four hours one night and four hours the next night. And this is what HA came out like. This is what it looks like. And I ran a DBE on this one. Uh, it needed it, um, I, but it really came in strong, of course, as it always does. And what surprised me is that oxygen and sulfur both produced a lot of data. And when you've got data showing up good in, in both of those, then the object, for me at least, is not going to be too difficult to process. And I didn't have to fight with this one at all. That's what my Cygnus wall looks like. And I like how it turned out, and it I really didn't have to fight with the data. This is really uh, how it, it looked early on in the processing. So I just had to clean it up a little bit and maybe sharpen some edges. So I like how that came out. Uh, I think I'm done, I think. And now let me show you a couple other things. This is how NGC 7822 turned out with the Hubble palette. I had a, a previous video on this one, but I wasn't quite finished with the Hubble yet. So that's how it, it turned out. Uh, this one, I really battled with it because uh, oxygen and sulfur didn't really come out that strong. But uh, check this out. It made it into the top pick section on Astrobin. That's not easy to do. That's how I'm surprised. And it got a pretty good response. And if it's in the top pick section, who knows? Maybe I'll get image of the day. That would be a surprise, because I was not expecting it for this object. And um, one more thing to show you here. Uh, like I said before, I, I could only capture four hours a night on the Cygnus wall. So when I was done with the four hours last night, I turned my telescope to the California Nebula. And even though this object is uh, too big to fit in, uh, in my new refractor, I, I captured the middle of it, which looks pretty cool. I, I don't know if I'm going to finish the other filters with it. I'd rather capture with my wide field telescope. But I like how this looks in HA. It's pretty cool looking. So uh, it's, it's funny because I posted that video a while back, my, I think my 35-day Astro Odyssey, where I captured a bunch of objects over a 35-day period. But it seems like the next 35 days after that is also shaping up to be productive. Uh, we're getting a lot of clear nights again lately. So, anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for listening. I'll see you later.